So if you've got around three to four hundred pounds to blow on your next smartphone, the great news is for that kind of budget, you can get some very sexy tech in 2021. We're talking OLED screens, awesome cameras, proper smooth game and smarts, good bit of 5G action if you fancy some of that, and all for less than half the price of a Samsung S21 or one of those bloody iPhones. So here's my personal pick of some of the very best budget-friendly smartphones that will cost you under £400 in summer 2021. And if any of these mobiles make you feel all tingly in the trouser department, well, the good news is you can check out my full unboxings and reviews right here on Techspert. Oh, and of course, for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notification notifications bell. Cheers! Now we've absolutely got to start with the Pixel 4a which is easily the best camera phone you'll find at this price. You've got the same primary sensor as the Billy Big Bollocks Pixel 5 flagship so you can capture great looking pics at any time of the day. You're only missing out on the ultra wide angle lens with this cheaper phone which is no big whoop. And Google has thankfully kicked the annoying trend of obnoxiously oversized smartphones square in the crotch because the Google Pixel 4a is a pocket pleasing 5.8 inches. So it's a joy to use one handed even with fairly stubby fingers like mine and it'll fit into pretty much any bag or pocket going. Packed into that dinky plastic frame is the Snapdragon 730G which handles everything including gaming without a grumble. The OLED screen is a stunner and yeah it is quite small but I'll still happily watch a whole flick on this thing. And as this is a Google smartphone, you've naturally got a lovely clean stock version of Android with the guaranteed timely updates for the next couple of years for a bit of added peace of mind. And most of the other smartphone features you'd hope for and expect at this sort of price point are present and correct. So for instance, you've got NFC for your Google Pay shenanigans. You've got a headphone jack if you want to plug in and enjoy some really crisp, high quality tunes. But unfortunately, the Pixel 4a doesn't include micro SD memory card expandability for the storage. And as a heads up as well, Google is known to occasionally discount the Pixel 4a 5G model. So it's under 400 quid as well. So that's definitely well worth keeping an eye on, especially because not only does it add that 5G support, but it also boosts the performance, although you do lose a little bit in the compact form factor. Now, one of the Pixel's most impressive rivals at this price point is the OnePlus Nord 2, which is a fresh 2021 release, boosting that performance significantly. See, the OnePlus Nord 2 is powered by a custom MediaTek chipset, namely the Dimensity 1200 AI. All you need to know is that it's powerful enough to blaze through pretty much any app out there, and most games as well. Even the mighty Genshin Impact is handled with nary a bead of sweat as long as you don't absolutely crank it up to the maximum detail levels, helped along by some dedicated gaming tools. You once again have an OLED screen, this time a 6.43 inch AMOLED with the added bonus of a faster 90Hz refresh rate, plus a stereo speaker setup and some serious audio smarts. So the Nord 2 is just as great for kicking back with some Netflix action as your favourite bold tech twat. And meanwhile, that 4,500 mAh battery, which will keep you going all day quite happily, also supports OnePlus's Warp Charge 65 tech, which can give you a full charge from empty to full in about half an hour. Madness! Oxygen OS is as sleek and customizable as ever, with the guarantee of two years of Android OS updates and three years of security updates. And while the 50 megapixel primary camera sensor can't quite capture pics as cleanly and capably as the Pixel, it is still well up to the job of everyday snaps and sharp looking home movies. And if that all sounds absolutely lovely, then definitely go check out my full OnePlus Nord 2 coverage, which is live right now. And also, if your budget can't quite stretch up to the OnePlus Nord 2, well, definitely check out the OnePlus Nord CE 5G instead, where the CE stands for Core Edition. Costs about 100 quid less than the Nord 2, but it's still pretty bloody good. That design is downgraded to plastic, while the stereo speakers are replaced with a basic mono setup, but you do get some great sound and audio via Bluetooth or the headphone jack, and the AMOLED screen is another 90Hz Full HD cracker, so media fans should be plenty sated. And while yes, the battery doesn't charge quite as fast as the OnePlus Nord 2, the Core Edition does still boast a 4,500mAh cell, which will keep you going all day, even with plenty of screen on time. Good bit of all day action, no stress. Gaming is still smooth and satisfying on lighter titles like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile, helped along again by the gaming mode, while the Snapdragon 750G chipset handles everything else just as capably. And yeah, the 64 meg primary camera isn't quite as good as the more expensive siblings, but it's still up to snuff for the family pics and videos. Now another fresh new 2021 smartphone that'll satisfy anyone with a budget under £400 is the Oppo Find X3 Lite, which again serves up some pretty gorgeous tech for a price that won't have your bank manager kicking down your front door. It is again plastic around back, but Gorilla Glass 5 up front where it counts with a small range of space inspired colours on offer. 
and at 6.4 inches it's again not as pleasingly compact as the Pixel but it's not an absolute whopper. You've got a slightly messy colour OS setup here so something that not everyone will get on board with it can be quite messy and a bit janky here and there as well but it does also serve up plenty of opportunities to customise your desktop and some decent bonus modes. But yeah, just like the Pixel smartphone and those OnePlus smartphones as well, sadly there is bug roll micro SD support to expand the onboard storage, which definitely sucks a whole bunch of soggy nuts. Still, the 6.4 inch AMOLED screen is a cracker, spaffing sharp visuals with crisp contrast right at your peepers, with 90Hz refresh to boot. The speakers are perfectly fine, but you also get a headphone jack for enjoying your tunes, and gamers are well served by the Snapdragon 765G chipset backed by 8 gigs of RAM, which can blaze through all of the usual titles, complete with a dedicated gaming mode for giving you an edge over those filthy bloody school kids and their obnoxiously youthful reactions. You've once again got that good bit of 5G support for a bit of future proof and you've also got 65 watt fast charge support as well so similar to the OnePlus Nord 2 it can power back up again in a jiffy. And the whole package is rounded off by a 64 megapixel primary rear camera which will definitely again do the job for all of your everyday home movies and family pics. And while we're on the subject of Oppo as well, another option that you can grab these days for under £400 is the Reno 4 5G. It'll actually cost you closer to 300 quid, so definitely if your budget is a bit tight, well worth looking at. Now I've got to say I haven't personally tested out the Oppo Reno 4 5G so I can't vouch for it but it does look like it basically sports very similar specs to the Oppo Find X3 Lite except you scale back that primary camera sensor from 64 megapixel to 48 megapixel and it's not a 90 hertz refresh rate display. But those are pretty much all the sacrifices you're making in order to strip a little bit off that asking price. Now if you're all about performance you might be tempted by the brilliant Poco F3 as well. Just 329 quid buys you this big old brick which may look about as sexy as a dead fish in stockings but it packs some incredible specs for a budget price. Now the Poco F3 uses Xiaomi's MIUI 12 launcher which not everyone again will get on with like Color OS. it can be a bit janky, a bit quirky in places shall we say but I quite like it. It's got more of a stock Android vibe these days in this 12th incarnations, you've got your apps tray, you've got your notifications bar all neatly arranged, but you've also got a lot of bonus bits thrown in there that you don't get with stock Android. Just like that nifty all-encompassing control sensor that I really can't get enough of. But it's the Snapdragon 870 chipset that really stands out here, offer an impressive grunt for gaming. You can even run the mighty memory guzzling Genshin Impact on high detail settings with only the occasional wee judder for sure, helped along by the dedicated cooling tech. And yes, you once again have a good bit of 5G action on there and a good bit of Wi-Fi 6 support too, so as far as connectivity goes, job done. Poco has packed in a 6.67 inch OLED screen with 120Hz refresh and Full HD plus resolution, although the sheer size of this screen means that images aren't quite as crisp as some rivals. However, colours are proper poppy, on that vivid mode vibrant movies and photos will absolutely knock your socks off. And that HDR10 Plus support means you can enjoy some incredible contrast with a good bit of movie action as well. It's not all happy fun times here on the Poco F3 though, so for instance there's bugger all headphone jack action, which is a real shame so you're restricted to using one of those god awful dongles or a bit of Bluetooth, which thankfully I had no issues with. And there is a stereo speaker setup, but it's not exactly going to blow you away. I did also find that the battery life isn't as strong as some rivals here, uh, even though it's a 4,500 milliamp cell, which matches some of the phones in this best budget roundup, I was running on dregs come bedtime more often than not. And the 33 watt uh, charging support, while not bad by any means, is again beaten by some rivals from the likes of Oppo and OnePlus in this roundup. But that is the last of my grumbling because I really enjoyed my time with the Poco F3, including that 48 megapixel main camera which can even deal with hyperactive subjects like we people off their tits on Haribo. Now Xiaomi also offers solid value for money with its rather lovely Mi 11 Lite 5G. This blower is very similar to the standard Mi 11 Lite but it does add 5G support courtesy of the Snapdragon 780G platform. And that chipset can breeze through games of Genshin Impact and so on, although under pressure it can get a wee bit toasty too. Battery life is good, you'll once again make it through a full day of heavy play on a single charge. I found that the 64 megapixel primary shooter slapped on the back end of the Mi 11 Lite 5G was absolutely fine for your everyday snaps and video as well, although there's no built-in optical image stabilisation, so I did find that low light shots were a bit fuzzier, a bit softer compared with the likes of the Pixel. But that HDR10 Plus certified screen is a stunner with 90Hz refresh for supported apps and no issues on the audio front either. 
and it's once again MIUI 12 in all of its batch mental splendor. My final semi sort of recommendation in this best budget phones under £400 roundup is the Samsung Galaxy A52 which still only just sneaks in there with a price tag of 399 the design does little to excite or arouse, but at least you can pick up the phone in Samsung slightly over-enthusiastically titled Awesome Blue if you do prefer brighter hues, and it is water and dust resistant, which is rare at this price point. Any Samsung fans out there will enjoy the feature-packed One UI experience, which is very similar here on the A52 5G, compared with the flagship S21 smartphones, which obviously cost a fair bit more. And the great news is that Sami is guaranteeing three years of OS updates and four years of security updates as well. So similar to what you'd get with the Pixel phone and the OnePlus smartphones, you've got that extra peace of mind. You're going to be keeping your handset for a good few years. The 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen certainly gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop, although you can opt for a more natural output in the display settings. It's definitely a good one for your Netflix and your Disney Plus and all that good stuff, despite the lack of HDR streaming. And the great news is that not only do you get NFC support and a headphone jack here on the Galaxy A52 5G, but you've also got expandable storage via a micro SD memory card slot as well. That holy trinity seems surprisingly difficult to find at this sort of budget price. Although I've got to say, I didn't get on particularly well with the slightly janky fingerprint sensor. As with most phones at this sort of budget, you've got 5G support thanks to the Snapdragon 750G chipset, although unfortunately this doesn't offer the level of performance of the Poco F3 and some rivals here, but it is fine for simple shooters like Call of Duty and PUBG. And hey, it's a 4500mAh battery yet again, and here on the Galaxy A52 5G I found that kept me going until I was all tucked up with Teddy without too much stress as long as you don't go too crazy with the screen on time, otherwise it's a slightly lethargic 15 watt charging speed, so pretty poor compared with most of the other phones here. And Samsung's feature packed camera is respectable, if not great, often struggling with moving subjects, so good luck convincing the Wiens to hold bloody still for more than two seconds. And that right there is my roundup of the best smartphones you can grab right now for a budget of around £400 and under. Of course, if your budget isn't quite stretching up to this sort of realm, don't worry, I have rounded up my favourite smartphones under £300 and even under £200 right now in 2021 as well. So go check out those for ideas of what else you can get. Now, I've tried my level best to only include smartphones that I've actually personally tested out and reviewed here on Techspert, so definitely go check out all that coverage for more on any of these blows. And if I missed out your own personal favourites, well, apologies, it might not be stocked here in the UK, or I might just not have had a bit of a fondle of it. So definitely let us know your own favourites down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.